Hi friends, Tracy here from the Sewing Channel. Welcome back, and if you're new here, welcome. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I received so much support and kind encouragement from my sewing community that it overwhelmed me. I read every single story, every single comment. If you need inspiration or you need to get motivated, you need to watch that video and read all of the comments. If you click the link in the top right hand corner of this video, it will take you to that video where you can read all of the comments. There were so many. What an encouragement. How inspiring you all are. The sewing community that surrounds me is amazing. Sometimes I think I'm just talking to myself here in my sewing room. But when something like that happens and you get such an outpouring from the community into the comment section, I knew right there I wasn't alone. So many of you have dealt with the same situation with not finishing a quilt. Well, I'm happy to say that I took your advice and I finished the cathedral window quilt. It was the biggest sewing accomplishment for me. And boy, does it feel good to have this behind me. <laughs> I am so excited to share with you how I made this cathedral window quilt. I will give you a step-by-step -step tutorial and it's on how I made it. Now I know that there are other ways to make this quilt. I've seen them, but I chose to do it my way, the Tracy way. If you stay till the end of this video, I will share with you the final measurement of this quilt and all of the squares and measurements and everything that you're gonna need to make this quilt. Oh my word, enough talking already. This tutorial has been too long in the making. Let's get busy making this stunning, show-stopping cathedral window quilt. Cut out a bunch of nine and a half inch squared pieces of fabric. I used a white cotton muslin fabric. I also purchased this handy nine and a half inch squared ruler to cut all of my squares out. Give your fabric a nice hot press. You will of course do this in big batches. You won't be doing them one at a time, so just keep that in mind. Next, we're going to take that nine and a half inch squared piece of fabric and fold it in half one time. And then we're going to put a crease with a hot press right in the side there. That crease will help us feed our sides of our fabric into our machine evenly. So next, we're going to take it to the sewing machine and with that folded side going in first to the sewing machine, you're going to go ahead and put a quarter inch stitch down both sides. Now, I chain stitched all of mine at the same time, so I would go down one side, all on one side, and then turn the whole batch around and go up the other side. One thing I want you to take note at this step, I want you to back stitch at the very beginning of each stitch, and at the end of each stitch, when you come to the end of that piece of fabric, back stitch again. That's going to be very important when we turn this inside out. We don't want any threads coming loose or apart. And you can do that while you chain stitch too. You should end up with something that looks kind of like a pouch or a envelope type deal. So what you're going to do is take those two seams that you just sewed, the opening there, and you're going to make those two seams kiss or nest right up next to each other. We need this part to be really even, otherwise our block's gonna be wonky. Once you get them kissing and nesting perfectly, go ahead and pop a pin right in the center there. Once the middle is pinned and secure, you're all set to run this through your sewing machine. This is probably the most trickiest step in the whole process. So I want you to start at one end, keeping from the middle up, I want you to keep the one side nice and straight. I don't want you to worry about the bottom part that's away, the farthest away from my presser foot right now. I just want you to make sure that that part from the pinned area up is perfectly straight. And you see me fussing with it right there to get it perfectly straight. Then I'm gonna lift my presser foot up and I'm gonna do a quarter inch seam all the way down just past that middle area. Meanwhile, 
don't worry about what is on the other side of that pin. Just focus on this very first part before you get to the pin. You start on that edge, you also need to back stitch. So now you see me getting right up close to the pin there. This is when I'm going to leave my needle in and I'm going to lift my presser foot up and I'm going to put my finger inside of the fabric right there, the other end that's not sewn, that bottom part after the pin. And I'm going to just fuss with it a little bit, trying to get it straight. Now I'm just focusing on everything after that pinned area. I'm even pulling away from the top portion and pulling more toward me on that bottom portion because I want a nice straight stitch here. So I'm gonna hold my finger down, my index finger of my right hand there, and I'm going to feed it through. I'm gonna go in about an inch after that middle area and I'm gonna stop and back stitch and cut my threads and lift my needle up and take my piece out. This is what you should have so far, just one inch or so after that middle pinned area. Now we need to finish sewing the rest of this area. So what I'm going to do is just show you here two inches after you made that stop and you pulled your piece out, that two inches right there, we're going to leave that open because that's going to be where we turn our work. So you're gonna wanna go about two inches down from where you just stopped and backstitched, and you're going to sew straight down a quarter inch just past that to the very end, and then you're gonna backstitch at the end of that as well. You should have a tiny area that has no stitching on it, like I'm showing you right there. There's a little like hole, so to speak, and that's where we're going to turn our work. Just before we turn it, this is what you should have so far. It's like a little puffy square kind of thing. It's kind of weird looking, really. And there's the hole right there that we left open. We didn't stitch right there, and everything is back stitched all on this entire piece. You backstitch on everything because we don't want anything to fall apart. So now I'm going to take it and put it right side out. And I do utilize a pokey tool. So if you have um, like a stick or something um, that's kind of blunt, not real sharp, and you're going to poke out all four corners of this block. Once all the corners are nicely poked out, you should have something that looks just like this. I want you to take note in the center, that nice X area right there. It's nice and crisscross. That tells me I'm gonna have a nice, pretty straight block. Now take note on the area right there, the opening that we left open. I leave that open. Now I know a lot of you might say, no, 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 you need to sew that. Well, some do, and you can if you want, but I don't because it's hidden and never to be seen again. I backstitched and it's, it's okay, trust me. So I'm gonna give this a nice hot press and make sure that everything is nice and creased. Now I don't wanna pull and yank on the fabric, of course. I just wanna nicely press it down. Once everything is nice and pressed, you're going to take all four corners and you're going to meet them in the center, just like you see me doing here. And usually how I did it, I put three down on the right, gave it a good little press, and then I added the other one in and then pressed them all together, front and back. Now it's going to be time to get out our old school needle and thread. And we are going to connect all four points in the center, connecting them to only the one piece that's closest to the points there. You're not going to wanna to put your needle all the way through this entire block. So you're just going to grab that center X area that I showed you. Um, you can knot it there, however you do it, but you're just going to connect all four of these points together by hand stitching. And when we would take trips, I would do this part, or if I was watching television, I would just have a big stack of these and just, you know, hand tack them down. It was, it was kind of nice to have a, a hand project where I wasn't actually in the sewing room. So I know some actually do sew it down with their sewing machine, but I didn't like the end result of it coming through onto both sides of the fabric. 
So that's why I ended up choosing to hand sew this portion. And if any of you have been a part of my channel here for a while, you all know I hate to hand sew. So this was a big deal for me to hand tack all these down. I mean, all like millions of pieces is what it felt like, seriously. This is what it should look like after everything is nice and secure and all tacked down. You should be able to stick your finger, just like you see me do, right through to the other side, but yet still being tacked to the center of that fabric. Now we're going to give it a nice hot press. Here are six of those pieces all hand tacked down and ready to go. This is what I consider one entire block, six of these tiny nine and a half inch squared pieces that we started with, all of them together will be one block in the end. The next step is to zigzag stitch the top row together and then the bottom row and then add row one and two together. Before you do that though, you should really audition your zigzag stitch so you don't mess it up because it will be seen on the back of your quilt. Here I'm showing you on this scrap piece of fabric the different zigzags that I auditioned. I ended up picking the one on the bottom, but in my initial quilt, I actually picked a more scant zigzag. Once you figure out what you like, then you're going to butt these two pieces up as close as you can together, following the guide on the middle of your presser foot to help you. You're going to zigzag straight down on these two pieces, be sure to backstitch at the beginning and backstitch at the end of this block. One of the main reasons why I really did like this technique as opposed to the traditional way of attaching them is because as you can see here as I come to the end of attaching these two blocks right there at the end, I can literally pull one side more if I need more within that stitch or less it made my blocks more predictably even, if I can say that. Now you're going to attach the third one in the row onto the two that you just did. And then you're going to go ahead and repeat on that second row, adding those three together. Take your time on the zigzag process. Sometimes if I wasn't focused enough, I would notice that it would kind of veer off a little bit. And when that happens, that is no good because that means that that zigzag, the one side is not catching the one side of the fabric. And that's no fun when you're done with a row and you look and you see that you've totally missed a spot. So just continue sewing all of those six squares together, making that one block. For a visual, I wanted to pop this picture in here and show you that those six pieces that we're just now sewing together, that red square that I have marked on this picture indicates those six pieces compared to the rest of the quilt. Hopefully that puts it in perspective of just how many pieces of those nine inch squares go into this quilt. <laughs> Just take your time and zigzag till your heart's content. Once you have all six pieces together, it's now time to put our two and a half inch squared picture inside of the windows. Now I did purchase a two and a half inch mini square, which totally helped me out on this project. For my quilt, I chose to not have any repeats. So I had a lot of different fabrics. What you're going to want to do is place them on the zigzagged area. Now, your mind will probably want to tell you to put it over top of the part that you hand sewed, but that's not the case with these because you need two blocks in order to make a picture window. And I'll lay it right there. See, it's not, you don't put it over that spot. You put it over the portion of where the zigzag is because you're gonna pull the bias over from each side, which is actually pulling from two separate pieces. Once you have your two and a half inch squares placed where you would like them, you can either pin them down or you can also utilize just some glue stick to glue them down just temporarily until you can get them sewn on. 
Before I take it to the sewing machine, I will show you how we're going to pull the bias down over all four sides. You see where the zigzag is there, it's laying on the zigzags, and then one part is tacked down from the hand tacking. You're going to pull that over just like that, and then sew right along there. And then you're going to do that on all four sides. Now I did do something different on mine. I did three sides and then I put a very tiny pinch of uh, batting or polyfill is what I used inside of each square to make it a 3D look and give it just a little bit more dimension. And when you only have six to deal with that are connected at one time, it's very easy to sew these down. It's when the quilt gets really big, like how I ended up sewing and finishing it this week where I had to go inside of the quilt toward the middle and sew these down. Now that was a little difficult, but this first stage when you're just getting all of the um, initial blocks together, it's, it's really simple to maneuver within your sewing machine. So here you just see I picked a side and pulled the bias flap over making the one side of the picture window. And then I'm going to pivot and go down the other side. And so that I don't have to turn too much, I'm going to try to make a path where I don't have to lift and cut my threads too often. The beauty of a cathedral window quilt is that as you're doing this portion right here, by sewing those flaps in and making the picture window. If you look on the back here, as I've posted this picture here on the right-hand side of the screen, it makes a beautiful quilting on the back of your quilt, which in the end is really cool because your quilt is fully done when you're done with the initial sewing. So once I connect all these together, it's done. I don't have to uh, sandwich it together with batting. I don't have to bind it. I don't have to quilt it. I don't have to send it to a quilter. It's done because the quilting is done within the process of making the quilt. After all three sides were sewn on each of these picture windows, I then took my pinch of polyfill and just tucked it inside and then pulled the other side closed and then just stitched up the fourth side. Here I'm just demonstrating about how much polyfill I put in and how I did it. I just shoved it in there, pulled over the other side of the window and then just stitched it up just like I had stitched the other sides of the picture windows. This is what one block looks like and there are seven picture windows here. Check out the back. It's already done and already quilted. You don't have to ever touch that part of the project again. That's the beauty of the cathedral window quilt, I think anyways. Take note when I add the other block with the one that we just made, that only when you add them together will you create yet another picture window right down that center area. Essentially what you're going to do is keep adding these blocks to make your quilt bigger and bigger and bigger till you get the size that you would like. When you're all done with your quilt and you've made it as big as you'd like, go ahead and clip off all of the excess threads just like I'm doing here. Now they'll be on the front and the back and there will probably be a million of them, just an FYI. <laughs> Here is my quilt, a video of it in all of its glory. I wanted to sort of lay it flat so you could get a good feel for the magnitude of the size of it. It really is gorgeous. I am so grateful to all of you that pushed me through to the end, to the finish end of this quilt. Honestly, it was your motivation and your quilt stories that never got finished, your quilt stories that got finished. It was all of it. It was everyone coming together that really blessed my heart and pushed me further than I wanted to go. But I'm so glad you did. And I'm so grateful and I'm so thankful for this sewing community. I really am. 
To make the size quilt that I made for my daughter and my new son-in-law, you will need 360 nine and a half inch squares of muslin. That's approximately 30 or 40 yards. Oh yeah, it's a lot, it's a heavy quilt. You will also need 362 and a half inch pieces of fabric for your picture windows. You don't have to use all different like I did. You could use a theme or something like that. It's up to you. One last note on how I finished off the corners and all of the sides. All I did was pull back without having any of the pictures on the corners or the sides, just like I did when I went around the picture windows as if that picture was in there. And it finished off beautifully. If you found any value in my video tutorial today, please consider supporting this channel by just subscribing. That's it. That's all you have to do. And I sure would appreciate it. Until next time on the sewing channel, take care.